So up shooters, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to SP Reviews where today we have ourselves a track by an act named the Bedlam Battery titled Unburnt. And if we switch over to here, this is an act that I reviewed very early on into my time as a music reviewer and I'm really glad to be checking out more of their work. We've got Unburnt which is, as I understand it, is like an analogy told through the lens of the Salem Witch Trials. It's about people who think they know what's best for everybody. So I'm, I'm keen to hear more about that. We're gonna listen through this from start to finish and we're gonna hear what we think. Let's go. Oof, that synth part is very airy, isn't it? Very airy. A little bit unsettling, but um, that's totally fine. And it's very, oh. Oh, those guitars though. Great, great sort of guitar groove with those power chords. I like it and the drums nice and punchy in the center. What I'm noticing at the moment is that there's quite a lot happening in the middle of the stereo field. I'm not sure if this is something we have tried to do, but just in case we haven't done it for this track, um, we obviously usually we would like double track those guitars and put them on the left and right sides. I'm not sure if that's been done here or not, but um, that's okay. You have not had the best ways that are the best for all of us. I see, I see, I see. Clear message here. And match the, uh, you know, the confronting harmonies we have here. Very dark and very sort of like, um, it doesn't sound like you're going to have a great time when you listen to this kind of stuff. Sounds like there's something not quite right in the world, you know? Cool vocals, I like I like the way we're delivering that. It's a nice contrast to these cleaner uh, vocals we had earlier on the verse section. Um, it, it, it works well and contrasts well with these more melodic guitar riffs that we have here. Um, you know, like if you've got a lot of color in that guitar section, have the screamies and have the growlers, you know? Um, it works really well. It's just often when you have the growls and like lots of ze open zeros or something like that, that's when it can get a bit too much. But of course that is thoroughly subjective, you know? Cool, uh, eighth note. Drum fill there. I, I enjoyed the way that was phrased there. Um, we're keeping in time with the way we're phrasing those guitar parts. There's a nice, everything's syncing together really well. Um, it's actually a really interesting vocal style. It kind of sounds like we're whispering a little bit. There's a kind of kind of kind of kind of graspiness to it, which again texturally contrasts well to what we have in that lead section. Um, the bass guitar is it? I'm assuming there is a bass guitar in this. It's sounding nicely. Uh, it's behaving itself nicely in the mix at the moment. It's nice to have that break come in with that emphasis in the lead guitar as well. Um, there's like a perceived difference in the loudness here that uh, is very effective. Helps to, yeah, draws your focal points to the important parts. It's nice to have space in here with the instrumental section as well. We're not too, we're not trying to rush through the story, you know?
And have a break here without the drums. Smart move. It's giving me mid 2000s as I lay dying kill switch engaged vibes, dude. Like for real. I'm getting kind of nostalgic for it, you know? Are we gonna have a solo or another instrument instantiated somewhere or what are we gonna do with this uh, current setup we've got? How are we gonna develop it? It's pretty slick. It's, it sounds like it's filled with fire and brimstone. It has got that heaviness to it, that um, that sense of menace to it, sense of frustration and tension to the overall coloration and tonality of the track. It doesn't sound, yeah, it doesn't sound like we're gonna have a happy ending. An eye for an eye till they're all blind like you. I think that's a cool line. We're just continuing to try to explain to this person, you know, what they're doing is, you know, obviously incredibly destructive and just the power has gone too far, man. It's going on a massive power trip, dude. Nice change of pace here with this breakdown part. I, I like that um, we're doing something different for the last part of the song here. I'm not sure if we're going to return to the original motif, but either way, I'm happy with it. Those toms have a nice resonance to them. Oh. They get me afraid. It's effective because it was unexpected. Again, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. Nice change. And having those bits where we don't have drums, we have a ba 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 you know. Again, it's a class act, man. I've got no real complaints about this. I've potentially got suggestions, but we'll get to that in the conclusion. Unburned by the Bedlam Battery. I, I think that this is a step up for the Bedlam Battery. Um, while I appreciate the works I've heard of him previously, Maybe it's just because I've got a better setup now than I used to have. It's sounding um, really nice and fresh. You know, obviously it isn't sunshine and daffodils and rainbows, but you know, not all music needs to be like that. You know, this is metal. This is metal, and that's it. I, I like I like listening to my metal. But this is, of course, the conclusion for my review of Unburnt, The Bedlam Battery. Um, this is something I don't think I did in the previous reviews I did when I started out. I didn't have a structured conclusion section, so I also didn't have a green screen. I was a little tiny cube in the corner of the um, video. Um, that that's fine though. Um, you know, I, I think again, I think this. I know I've spoken about what, what this track was about, and uh, I think that the story was delivered well, um, nice and clean. You could tell what was going on without necessarily needing the lyrics for it shown in the video. At the same time, I always encourage the artists, musicians I work with, to have the lyrics in the video just in case someone is like not have English as their first language, or something like that. You know, what was the what was the hook line? Yeah, I won't break. You know. Um, that, that no matter how much this person tries to tell them how they should live their life, the singer or the protagonist in song is is not going to allow them to dictate their life. And I think that that's really cool. I, I suppose then the tension, assertion, if not a, aggression in this track comes from that protagonist fighting back and saying, no, you're not going to tell me what to do. You don't know what's best. You're just going to continue doing an eye for an eye until everyone's blind. The vocalist I'm happy with how he performed in this. Having the melodic kind of graspy kind of vocals uh, intertwined with those kind of more sort of growly shrieky bits in the chorus, they were, they were, they were, they were good contrasts to each other. It kind of, it sounds like how you'd expect someone to be communicating if they were going through that sense of turmoil that was described in the story. You know, if it was like a kind of, I don't know, I don't really know how else you could have done these vocals stylistically in order for it to be appropriate for the subject matter. So I'm really glad that we kept that authenticity there with the way we sung and verbalized and 
in our, in our performance here. When we did get those cleanish kind of parts come through, they did sound like they matched um, in regards to the overall harmony and, and you know harmonized well. And, and again, when you had those lead parts in the chorus, you didn't really need to have much more than those growly shrieky parts because you had that coloration in that guitar section to balance it out. So it didn't become too oppressive, you know? The structure of the song, we had several different in just instrumental parts along with the verses and the chorus and then interlude at the end. I like that we had to change up some of those guitar riffs. I feel like we could have maybe had some sort of like clean guitar there or maybe like, um, we did have a solo in there. I think we had some lead lines in there, which is kind of cool. That was a palette cleanser. That was kind of dope to have that in there. And uh, we could have we could have had some harmonized guitars or something like that in the last outro or something like that, that last outro hook, just to sort of spice things up and give it that little bit of extra sort of zazz. But you know, all in all, I'm happy with the way that the song has been structured, you know? It's easy to follow. It didn't. Get, it wasn't boring at any point over the four and a half minutes. The performances on the guitars, the drums, on the bass, and everything else, aside from the vocals, were strong. I think the rhythm playing was really tight. Um, worked really well with the drums. The, the, the drum. I, I'm not sure if we couldn't have tried doing some sort of like sixteenth note stuff occasionally, in regards to the fills and all that. But I still feel like the eighth note fills that we had along with the the. The, the typical sort of hi-hat crash ride beats that, we, that they worked well with everything in the mix. I liked the fact that we didn't overcomplicate the guitar harmonies despite what I was saying about maybe could the fact that we could have added another channel and had like harmonized guitars like later on. I think the point of the song was to have that focal point on the story when we weren't having those instrumental lead bits or those breakdowns or whatever and I think we kept it, we put in as much as we needed to in terms of the overall arrangement. Like, you know, you had your guitar bass drums and if we'd put in something else in, it might have overcomplicated the um, the overall sort of uh, vibe of the track. You know, you, you didn't need more than this. The production, the recording, mixing, mastering. I liked the tone individually of the drums and the rhythm guitar parts and lead guitar parts. I'm assuming there was a bass in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure I could hear a bass. The bass sounded fantastic. You know, it was nice and subtle served as a great foundation for the mix. I, I think we could have potentially had a wider guitar sound, like we could have definitely, if we hadn't, if we haven't double tracked the guitars, we definitely could have done that. Um, sometimes the guitars can sound like they're more in the center of the mix, even if they are double tracked primarily because we've copied and pasted the guitar tracks on the left and right, just in case we weren't aware of that. We can't just take the track we did on the left and copy and paste it to the right because you're going to have phasing issues. Just, yeah, I feel like if you'd had a little bit less of the folks in the middle of the stereo field, it absolutely, it just would have been that little bit more kind of like, you know, absolutely, let's go for this. It's thoroughly, you know, it's just because there's just so much space out here that I knew could have been filled, like in the other parts of the stereo field. If you had the guitars here and here and here, would have made more space for the vocals and the solo in the center of the mix. And I, I think the drums were side chaining well. It's, it's cool. Um, and the vocals came through nice and clearly in the mix. I'm not sure if we had like filters on the different instruments or not, EQ filters. Like I'd really need to know more about how this track was mixed and mastered before I can make any sort of educated comments on it. But uh, you know, for like a demo track or something like that, I'm really, really happy with it. I'm assuming that like we're just continuing to learn, develop our sound and stuff like that. And it's also worth remembering that in certain genres of metal, it serves us best to not have a completely flawless sort of sterilized sound, you know what I mean? So I kind of like the roughness, the grittiness of this track in the recording. I think it serves it well. It, um, it's definitely metal. <laughs> and it's not like I could struggle to hear the individual instruments. It's not like we had volume issues or something like that. Sometimes it's just the EQing can so take out the frequency spectrum of another instrument if we don't sort of like have that totally sort of with filtering and stuff, but it's okay, it's okay. All in all, I'm quite I'm quite happy with, with Unburn as, as a track. I didn't mean to start it then. I'm quite happy with the Unburn as a, as a track. I'm, I'm happy with um, the effort was put into it and I wish the Bedlam Battery best of luck in the future with their musical endeavors. But effectively, yeah, this is my review of the Bedlam Batteries Unburnt. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go show Bedlam Batteries some love via the various social medias and the YouTube page. Stay cool and stay safe. And please also remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as they need the help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world. And I'll catch you in the next review. Spot hands up. <laughs>